What's up, my boomers? It's me, Melanie Mac, here on my social commentary channel, Melanie Mac Go Boom. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, my hair is still drying, so apologies if anybody is offended by that. <laughs> Throwing it out there. All right, so let me uh, go and dive into today's topic, and that's Robert Downey Jr. going vegan. He's been vegan for like a couple years now. And yeah, it's it's definitely taken a toll on him. I saw a picture circulating. I thought it was fake at first. That's why I wasn't even planning on talking about it because I thought, oh, there's no way. There's no way. And no, it's real. He's already starting to really have the effects. So a lot of y'all know I'm a carnivore dieter. I eat carnivore diet, uh, sometimes keto, but mostly carnivore diets for the past two and a half years. So mostly just eat meat. And then I'll eat dairy um, sometimes as well and eggs, but mostly just meat. So, uh, yeah, that's transformed my health. And I made a video going a little more in detail about that. That's one has like Joe Rogan on the thumbnail about uh, needing misinformation. If you want to see more about that, um, ultimately, I think everybody should just do what works for them. This is what works for me. But I'm just saying... I think that veganism doesn't work for human beings in general. There are some people who seem to be doing okay on it, but anytime long term, uh, yeah, it's one of those things. There's a vegan channel or a vegan deterioration channel, and it is like, you see the comparisons, uh, you see the deterioration going on that is so far beyond just aging. It's to the point to where you can't, it's getting harder and harder to differentiate between, huh, does, does this person have, uh, is this from meth or has this person a long-term vegan? It's, I swear, I will not condone a vegan diet. I don't care. People can be mad at it. But I will say, universally, a vegan diet long-term is not healthy for human beings. I will say that with confidence. So, let me go ahead and, uh, yeah, look at this. So, Robert Downey Jr. went vegan. Iron Man, Tinfoil Man. I believe he's been vegan for two years now. This is a, yeah, massive difference. Now, this this picture is cropped even. Let me see if I can find Robert Downey Jr. Instagram. He posted on Instagram. So, let me pull that up because, yeah, it's even worse. It is even worse. And he's flexing on that too. Look. That's just. That is a big time difference. I saw this picture on social media. Saying it was Robert Downey Jr. And I didn't believe it. Luckily he still has. You know he's still retained some muscle. Because I mean he's built it before. But you can just see his face. His teeth his skin color that's what's so telling from a vegan i feel like a long-term vegan is usually the skin color um for some reason the skin just starts to look like you know how when you stretch a rubber band really far and then you, you stretch it too far and then you let go of it and it's just left a little like overly stretched out it kind of has that effect and then also just that lifeless look to it and unfortunately, yeah, there that's what we see here from you know a previously very healthy, strong looking man uh, just completely starting to look lifeless after just two years, let alone a decade of this once that happens, which hopefully not. Um, now I do want to show some sort of comparison here. Let me find um. Sean Baker Instagram. Now, Sean Baker is a carnivore. How old is he? Like, how old is Dr. Sean Baker? Sean Baker. Uh, he's gotta be, he was born in 1967, all right? When was, when was Robert Downey Jr. born? Uh, 1965, okay? So, they're just like two years difference. Let me see if I can find a picture of Dr. Sean Baker. Yeah, go go on his Instagram, but we'll also just go and look, do an image search. <laughs> this picture has, okay, let me actually find one that doesn't have uh, the Bitcoin eyes added to it. I don't know why 
people are doing that. Um, all right, so this is on Twitter. So, yeah, I mean, this was Dr. Sean Baker. Here, look at him. Just two years difference. This is like, yeah, like night and day. Night and day. And he is a carnivore. He's, I don't, he's been doing carnivore diet for a few years at least. And just the contrast there. Uh, it's, it's sad. Now, and it, the, you can't have the excuse of like, oh, but he works out all the time. I mean, clearly Robert Downey Jr. put in a lot of work to prepare for these roles. There is no reason, no excuse why he should have deteriorated this much in two years. Now, just imagine, think about people who don't have that history of working out and building muscle and, and getting in elite shape for these Hollywood roles. You know, just know what that does to them. Like I said, that vegan deterioration channel on YouTube just shows you everything you need to see. Now, I ain't about forcing my views on people. If someone wants to be vegan, go ahead and be vegan. But you're really throwing your health away for animals. I would not advise that uh, personally. Now, let's go ahead and look at some of the comments here. Only reason to go vegan is if you don't want animals to be slaughtered. Health-wise, it makes zero sense. Exactly. And at the end of the day, don't be a martyr for animals. It's not worth it. Now, obviously, there are, we should be caring about animals um, being treated humanely. The animals that we do eat, we want them to have healthy lives while they are alive. And we want them to be slaughtered, not under duress. And the thing is, is, is that the cortisol that raises when an animal, even beyond just obviously we should care about the animal itself, but even beyond that, whenever uh, an animal is killed with high cortisol levels, like under a bunch of stress and all that, like it does affect the meat quality as well. So there's just a plethora of reasons why we should care about that. Um, a story in two photos, Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. goes vegan. This was in 2020. Two years later, ugh, dude, even just his face, you can tell a massive difference. It's just like, oh my gosh. Like I said, this, this kind of deterioration is just as bad as drugs, dude. It's insane. Iron deficient man. <laughs> What's the best red light to order for what? I don't really know. Uh, oh, I think that might just be some sort of joke. Okay. Uh, isn't the best tennis player in the world also vegan? No, but a 315-pound NFL defensive lineman is. Okay. Um, I think that there are... Here's the thing is, is uh, when, it, when you have exceptions to the rule, the only thing about that is, first of all, usually they haven't been vegan long enough or they're young enough that to where you're not seeing the negative effects. But here's the thing. If they weren't vegan, they would be... 10 times healthier, stronger, whatever it may be. Um, there is no case that you can find, oh, here's a person who's vegan who is significantly stronger than they would be if they weren't. Now, I think the only uh, exceptions that you can find to that, and you can see some people who maybe were exceptionally obese and then they weren't after becoming vegan, well, that's simply because they're cutting out a bunch of processed junk foods and things that um, are not healthy for you in general. I think that even such, if you're eating a whole foods, plant-based diet, that's still healthier than living off of Oreos or whatever, even though I'm pretty sure those are vegan as well. <laughs> but you get what I mean. Um, just cutting out a lot of processed crap, a bunch of seed oils and things like that, which are seed oils are like the worst things you can put in your body. So don't do that. So yeah, here's the thing. Like I said, I do a carnivore diet. I definitely suggest, uh, for a lot of people to at least look into it because there are so many it's the most natural way essentially you can eat because even when you look at plants they've been modified by human beings um over time the plants we have now are not the same plants we had hundreds of years ago etc cetera, etc cetera. um so it is the most natural way you can eat beef has all the nutrients that you need all the vitamins our bodies don't need fiber there's a ton of research that you can do on that and if you look at a uh, plethora of testimonials from people who have reversed so many illnesses harvard did a long time or did a study of like six plus months on the carnivore diet and it was like in the 90 90 percentages for every person that has reversed illnesses have reversed diabetes uh, a ton of other stuff um so yeah i 
I'm a fan of it, but I ain't got no, like, I give a crap if someone's carnivore or not. I only share this kind of stuff because I see how it helped my health, but it doesn't, it's not my religion, so eat whatever you want, but I'm just saying, yeah, I would, I would say veganism not even once, and I, and I have a history of dabbling in veganism and feeling like I was on death's door, so that's why I didn't stick with it, thank goodness, long enough for it to have had, um, severe damage to my body. So, yeah, there's that. Let me go ahead and go into some comments from recent videos. Brandon says, sexual assault on animals was a death penalty offense in the Old Testament. I can see why, and I'm not opposed to that. <laughs> uh, Brigand Boy says, I grew up with farmers, not large scale. Grandparents had a cow, a bunch of chickens, geese, dogs, cats. My local friends worked on farms, lived on them as well. Chickens, goats, ducks, etc. From chicks to calves and so on. I'm not an expert, but I know enough about animals to know that even when you slaughter your own animal for meat, this kind of behavior is beyond the pale. Even when you are not putting animals on a pedestal, people tend to do that these days. These men still did something sickening and evil. Kids who did anything even brushing up against the notion of being like this were put right back in line quickly. Someone failed these men and they in turn have failed to be good people. Yeah, that's about this lizard, uh, this assault on a lizard if y'all have not seen that video. Um, yeah, and I agree. I grew up, um, I mean, I grew up in a military family, so lived all over, but lived for a sizable chunk of time of my childhood, um, in upstate New York where, you know, my best friends growing up, uh, lived on a dairy farm. And so then that's the thing is a lot of vegans and things like people like that want to knock farmers and all that, but they care about their animals and they love their animals. Um, you know, maybe like factory farms is a different story, but yeah, this kind of animal abuse or anything like that is, is not something that you see among most farmers. Like that, that is their livelihood and they care about their animals. Uh, so support local farmers. All right, Joey G. Datitude, Data Dude says, oh my goodness, <laughs> they buffed it slash filmed it. Oh, this was about, yeah, what they did to that lizard. Filmed it and then ate the protected lizard without using a condom. Sickos. You know what? I just realized after filming that video too is they they gang relationed that lizard okay like what was it four or five of them and then they ate it so i don't know what all they ate if they ate the entire thing but like they're essentially eating each other's <laughs> and i know two of them were related this is just gets more weird the more you look into it i'm i am highly disturbed all right sparky says steve Irwin would not be happy that indeed Bourbonic says, wow, I don't understand some people. Also, I gained 15 pounds in a little over a month on that carnivore diet. I should have taken pictures. 208 pounds isn't bad for a six, six foot tall dude, right? Well, hopefully it's all muscle. You inspire me a lot. Now you will gain, um, you will gain muscle on carnivores if you're lifting and all that kind of stuff from just that amount of protein. Now, if you're gaining fat, uh, I would say, I would, I, I want to know if, if you see this, like leave another comment, let me know what you're eating because if you're sticking to primarily just beef, um, you shouldn't be gaining fat. You would be losing fat like that. Now, when people gain weight on the carnivore diets, typically, typically because they're eating like a crap ton of butter or fatty stuff like, uh, bacon or a lot of dairy in general, cause dairy will make you gain weight. Um, so I would be curious to see that, but in general, I think even if you did gain 15 pounds of fat in your first month on carnivore diet, I wouldn't be mad at it because there's an adaptation stage and, uh, fats are really good for us. And so they can help, um, you know, heal your body in a way. So I wouldn't be mad at that. Now, if fat loss is the goal, then I would cut back on fats, uh, cut the dairy down to a minimum and, um, just stick with meat. If you just stay, if if you really want to get hardcore with it, do beef only. If you do hardcore beef only for like a month, you will lean the crap out. I'm. So, it's funny that I mentioned that. I'm actually starting beef only as of today. And now that I'm telling you guys about it, I have to stick with it. Um, I'm doing a 30-day shred. So upping the intensity in my workouts and also doing beef only for 30 days. Um, 
might up it to 60 but we'll see because i'm trying to get like really shredded so i will have to keep you guys updated on that harbel 99 says i hoped for a second this was like people accidentally getting leprosy from contact with armadillos but no it's the bad version wait they force fun time to the lizard then cooked it and ate it that's grotesque and they filmed it gabe get the trumpet no i will not calm down have you seen what they're doing the lizards i just god has to be like face tom face palming constantly uh, stuff like this makes me understand why the flood happened uh during noah's day i get it i get it <laughs> brad the third says thoughts before recording this video dot, dot, dot. how do i keep this a christian channel <laughs> This video was one of the, the most um, trickiest ones I've done so far. As I was filming, I had in the back of my mind, like, what are people going to think about this? And how this is getting weirder and more disturbing the more I read this article. Uh, what am I doing right now? Should I even be uploading this? It, it, it was a process in my mind. Soundwave Spectre says, Melanie, thank you for your verse of the day and for your prayer group. I'm an atheist on a bad day and an agnostic theist on a good day, but something compelled me to go to your prayer group. I had a wonderful experience and would love to tell you about it someday as it was incredible. Your community was wonderful and welcoming and I will definitely be back next week. That is like the sweetest thing. It makes me so happy. So uh, I have said in past videos, my Discord server, which I have linked in my link tree in the description if you guys want to check it out. Now, you can talk about anything. There's different subsections there to talk about all kinds of stuff from trending topics um, to my videos to video suggestions to gaming to anything. And then also there is a a prayer request group so people type in their prayer requests and then on Sundays I guess is when they arranged it I don't know the exact time I need to uh, make a pinned post so you guys know when exactly to show up for that um, they do a prayer meeting and so that was yesterday or last night and I know at least some of y'all got on the voice channel and and there's a couple people who are comfortable praying out loud not everyone is so even if you just want to hang out hang out in there um, you can type in your request, all that. You don't have to be vocal and you don't have to talk. You don't have to pray out loud if you don't want. I know I personally kind of have some social anxiety and I know people don't know that since I make content online. Uh, it depends on the setting, but I will say in a, in a setting like that, hopping on Discord, um, I typically type on Discord more than I talk in, um, in the groups and stuff because I do have some, uh, some social anxiety. But, uh, so in a setting like that, yeah, I, I definitely commend those who, um, lead in that and lead in prayer and stuff because I, I just have a lot of respect. So I'm like, dude, that kind of stuff would make me nervous. So I'm so grateful to the prayer leaders there. Um, uh, if anyone wants to check that out, check out the link I have in the description. Gertius Maximus says, well, what was it wearing? <laughs> about this <laughs> what was the lizard wearing? A short skirt? Warren says, thank you, Melanie. I was eaten. And then this pop up. <laughs> You're welcome, Warren. <laughs> Visitor says, I hope my laughing during this video doesn't mean I'm some kind of AAP, but dang, lol. <laughs> All right. Not gonna lie. It was a bit funny to see Melanie reacting to cursed content. Also, yeah, if something bad happens to these dudes' health, I won't be surprised nor feeling bad. Not the type to go on revenge, but your actions have consequences. Yeah, I wouldn't be mad at it either. Priyana says, me reading the video title, every day we stray further and further away from the Lord. Melanie reads articles saying it happened in India. Me, someone of Indian heritage. Well, dang. <laughs> you know, that reminds me of like my mom. She's from Arkansas. And so whenever something in the news happens, she's like, please don't be from Arkansas. Please don't be from Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Florida man like dude it's just like you hate to see it when it's when it's where you're from it's okay <laughs> we know not everyone is like that there Dorothy says this is one of those things that just gets worse and worse the more you read on yes I yeah I, I had a lot of thoughts during that all right so I'm gonna go into the verse of the day this video has gone a bit long so um We'll see. I'm going to read for however long I felt compelled. I feel compelled to. Now, usually I read in ESV, but I liked this in the NIV. Um, uh, yeah, I just liked, uh, I felt it click more for me. Uh, obviously, they mean the same thing, but still. Um, so, it says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Do they come from your desires that battle within you? And I, I really like this because when you think about sin in general, people, um, I think it's human nature a lot of times for us to try to put the blame on outside sources whenever we 
um, sin. And at the end of the day, what leads us to sin? And we wouldn't be sinning and we wouldn't be tempted to sin if that temptation didn't ignite something within us. You know what I mean? So um, it, when we do things that we shouldn't be doing, it means that the desire was already implanted there in the first place. And so think about something like quarreling and fighting and all that. Um, we clearly already had the desire there in the first place. Um, so yeah. Uh, we're human, so the desire to sin is there. Now, I will say everybody has different things that they battle with. I did hear a pastor once say that, oh, you can't judge someone else from their sin because you don't know. You don't know that you wouldn't do that. I disagree with that. I think that there are plenty of things I wouldn't do, like that lizard story, okay? So, not everybody is going to battle with the same sin, <laughs> But the, the, there are some just sadistic people that it's like, dude, you, you, you just think that the wood chipper needs to be used. Uh, um, but there are other things like other smaller scale things that, yeah, all of us will have to battle with, you know, um, arguing among people, for example, now, not to say that we should never defend stuff or never have any sort of debate, but, you know, just quarreling for the sake of quarreling, mean-spiritedness, lying, things of that nature. Um, you desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You, or just think of, like, for example, things that you want in your life and you see other people having them. And so sometimes, you know, it's human nature for us to just be like, oh, well, this person's successful because this and try to f make excuses or try to put them down so we feel better. And that's never a good practice. Um, you do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. And that's also a good thing to keep in mind because it's just like, um, sometimes we don't get what we want and we keep praying and praying and asking and asking. And first of all, the delay doesn't mean if what you, you're not getting what you want, it doesn't mean that it wasn't meant for you. It, it can mean that, Hey, it's just not the right time. Or it can mean in, like in this situation, are you asking with what, well, what are your intentions? Are they in the right place? You know? So if you're asking for prosperity, for example, if you're asking for financial blessing, um, what is your motive with that? Um, because that's one thing is you see some people who uh, who can be otherwise good people and seem like they're pretty good and they're pretty chill. But then they get some money or, or some power, you know, whether it be, yeah, money or power through like a promotion or something like that or a little bit of fame. And they are worthless after that. I have seen people that I thought were the most humble people, small streamers, for example. This is my space this is something I relate to. So then I see them get just like a touch of internet fame, not even that much, but I see them get a little bit of success and then all of a sudden they become insufferable. And so I think that's something to keep in mind. Also, we have to check ourselves with stuff like this too. All right, uh, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that that he jealousy is that supposed to say the the jealousy longs for the spirit uh, jealousy longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell within us or in us but he gives us more grace that is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is really great too. Um, because that's the thing is temptation is always going to be in our lives and stuff like that. Like, dude, you could straight up resist that, straight up rebuke that. Like, don't. That's the thing too is how I believe as a Christian is that I do believe the devil and demons and all that. They're constantly going to be trying to throw stuff in our path and trying to throw us off the path. Especially if us as believers are on the right path that we're supposed to be on and it's going to glorify God and all that. They're, they're going to be throwing curveballs at us to try to throw us off path. Um, so whenever that starts to happen, resist it. I don't know if y'all can hear my neighbors mowing the lawn. I don't know. But anyway, um resist it you feel that kind of like you, you feel the temptation you feel you feel like you're you're in spiritual warfare rebuke it rebuke it 
Uh, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Now, I think double-minded, this is a really important thing. I needed to, to do a whole segment of this at some point. But it's one thing to be believers and to say that we are believers. But it's another, like, we can't be double-minded with this kind of stuff. And it's something that we all, I have to check myself on as well. Because, it, you know, it, you're not always going to get public approval. And and there are certain things that it's just like, hey, we got to stand our ground. We can't say this and we can't say that we're Christians and then act in this way to try to please people. You can't say you're a Christian and then live for the world. And living for the world, what that involves is just saying what people want to hear and letting people, you know, you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too. You know what I mean? So as Christians, those of us who are, we're going to have to, we're, we're going to deal with backlash a lot of times. We can't please the world and God at the same time. Um, so yeah, obviously we shouldn't be trying to make people mad or anything like that, but we do got to stick to our principles. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them against speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? And I really like this as well because um, I think when it comes to, like when it comes to being a Christian, we have to remember that we're saved by God's grace. We're not saved by self-righteousness. We're not saved because we follow the law perfectly because we don't and we never will. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't try, but we never will. And so we can't, it's not our place to be judging each other. Um, that's for God to do. Now, I think there's certain standards that we do need to live up to and stuff, but check yourself, man. Check yourself. Focus on yourself. Like, focus on <clears throat> the log in your own eye before the you focus on the peg in someone else's or the splinter in someone else's. Um, that's important. So, anyway, let me go ahead and finish reading this because I already made it this far. Now, listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city spend a year there carry on business and make money why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow what is your life you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes instead you ought to say if it is the lord's will we will live and do this or that um that also makes me think of the verse like a man i'm, I'm paraphrasing but a man plans his ways but how that go? I but like we can plan our ways and we can try to plan things, but at the end of the day, God's will is going to prevail, and that should be what we want. Um, as it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Now this is huge, and this is another thing is I feel like with. That's one reason why I incorporate like the verse of the day and stuff like that in my videos. I feel like, you know, I, this is how, this is how I share my faith and I feel like it's an important thing and, and people, people make it known, man. I know uh, there's always that fine line. It's where I don't want to, I don't want to feel like I'm pushing my own faith on everyone who doesn't want to hear it. I don't want to feel like I'm forcing it on anybody or coming across as judging anybody. And so there is that fine line with that versus, but, but at the same time, actually sharing my faith has, has people have made it abundantly clear. I mean, just look at a couple comments ago here. People have made it abundantly clear to me how much it's helped them. And so I do feel like this is something that I need to keep doing. And so what would be easy for me though? What would be the easiest way for me not to get any backlash would be to stop doing this. Cause I mean, I get, I still get backlash and I still get comments from people who don't like it. Um, and it, I, my videos would be more inclusive if I didn't do that. Uh, and on a platform where you're trying to reach as many people as possible there can be some negative stuff that could be affiliated with that some people probably don't watch me because of that but uh for me to know that this is helping people and to deliberately not do it for my own selfish needs or desires um would be a sin I, that's how i feel that's how you know it's right there so anyway 
that's that today's chapter of the day i went in man um that's that <laughs> i hope that that helps at least one person so thank you all so much for hanging out with me today i hope you have a wonderful day i will see you tomorrow and in the meantime go boom <laughs> <laughs>